Hi, my name is Anna. I'm a BACP registered psychotherapist and counsellor and I'm a counselling psychologist in doctoral training working at Private Therapy Clinic. Um, just to tell you a bit about my experience and my qualifications, I started off by doing a um, BSc or an undergraduate degree in psychology and then I went on to do my Masters in mental health and following that I did a postgraduate certificate in low intensity cognitive behavioural interventions and during that time I was working, um, working with clients and gained a profile to be able to start working on the counselling psychology doctorate which I'm currently doing now and that experience has given me insight into working with lots of different people from different backgrounds um, with different presentations so coming to me with with very different difficulties um, and the clients that I've seen have been of differing age groups as well so some of the conditions that I might treat might be depression, generalised anxiety disorder uh, health anxiety, obsessive compulsive disorder, um, among quite a few others. So I'm trained to work with three different approaches, that's person-centred, psychodynamic and cognitive behavioural therapy. So for person-centred therapy that's really about giving you the space to be heard and listened to and it's to help you come to an understanding of what's going on for you. With psychodynamic it's slightly, it's slightly different, it's looking at how the past has impacted your present, so how some of the things that might have happened to you or some of the experiences that you might have had, um, they might be things that you want to talk about and understand a bit further on in how they're impacting your life at the moment, so that might be unconsciously or consciously. Then with cognitive behavioural therapy it's looking at the present, what's going on in the here and the now and looking at some strategies to manage the way you feel. So. Our thoughts, feelings, behaviours and physical sensations have a real link to each other and sometimes we create patterns that help us in the moment but they might not help us in the long run. So they're adaptive, they are helpful but we might outgrow them or they might become unhelpful. Um, and at that point we'd look at what is it that we'd be able to change or what is it that we might be able to do differently in the therapy to, to help you perhaps overcome that or, or make those changes to make your life better. And another thing I'd say that would be really important is that I don't think there's a one-size-fits-all approach. So I don't think that we can say that I entirely fit this approach or, or I'd like just CBT. Um, and it, it might be more about uh, an integrative approach where you want to feel heard, you want to feel listened to, and you might want to have some of the experiences from a person-centred approach but you also might want some practical ideas of how to manage um, or some grounding techniques to, to manage the anxiety while also exploring a bit more in depth about where that might have come from. So coming to therapy can be a really daunting first step. So when you have a first session with me, then I aim to make that process really comfortable and create a space where you feel that you're able to be open and speak with me kind of freely and um, and I've come to understand that I'm really non-judgmental and I'm looking to create that relationship with you where you can get to know me and I can get to know you. Then after that I'd be looking to ask you some questions about yourself, what might have brought you to the therapy to begin with um, and I might ask you some questions around the things that you might want to be different or the things that that you'd like to discuss in in the sessions and what you might like to have from the therapy more generally. So. That might be that there's a specific thing that you want to change or you want to understand or work on your interpersonal relationships. Um, there, are, there are varying things that people come to therapy with or people would like um, out of the therapy itself. There might also be things that you want from me. So it might be that you want a space to, to have some feedback or you might want some skills. So in that space, we'll discuss that together and we'll really explore whether it's the skills that you would like um, some techniques, things to take away from the session or whether you'd really like to explore and talk about what's been going on for you and, and using the space predominantly for that so we can work on those goals and think about that together. Then we might come up with a bit of a contract so what that will be is um, how, how we'll go about the session, so what day you might like to do, um, how long the sessions will be and they're typically 50 minutes um, and following that then we'll look at how you might like to go forward. So that might be with an open-ended contract, that might be with a, 
a shorter term contract. It really depends on how you're feeling as you come to see me and what you might like from the sessions. I think mental health conditions or, or mental health difficulties, they're really common and they're things that we can experience at any point in our lives as we go through or experiences that we have more often. Um, these could be triggered by a significant event, um, something traumatic or another significant life event. Um, or they could be an overwhelming feeling from the more day-to-day -day aspects of our lives. So getting a new job or changing a career in some way, these things might contribute to our general stress levels. And no matter how big or small you feel that problem might be, it can be really important to talk about it. So it can be really important to reach out. And that might not be with a family member or a friend. It might be reaching out to a professional, seeking some external support. Um, and in that way, a, a therapist is really there for you, there to listen to you and understand what you're going through and how something might be impacting you. And that's where I would say that it's really important to get the support that you need and um, to remove some of that stigma for reaching out for therapy. An important question that I get asked is whether I've had my own personal therapy. And outside of my training, I have had my own personal therapy. But as a part of the counselling doctorate as well, it's a mandatory part of the course. And I think the experience has been really invaluable because I've had the opportunity to understand how difficult it can be to, to find a therapist um, or to get into that initial session um, and to experience some of the anxieties that are brought about by starting off that process. So I've had my own therapy and it's given me the understanding of what it feels like to be vulnerable with another person, um, to, to sit in a room or to sit on Zoom with somebody and really connect and understand any difficulties that I might have been having at various points. Um, and it's also a time to um, reflect on self-development and growth. Um, it might be that we go to therapy because we have a specific difficulty that we want to address, but it might also be for personal growth. And I think as humans, there's always a chance to grow and do better and, a, and to have a space for reflection. So I think that's a, a really important part of being a therapist is having had therapy yourself so that you can have some understanding of what, what that feels like um, to be a client.